you're gonna scream. Come on. Oh, baby, like you're having a bad dream. Huh? Oh, I'll take you there. Take you there. Oh, oh baby, the exorcist there. Come on. told me you had a Scott Weiland story and we we're taping this on the we're recording this on the day that Scott Weiland passed away uh, is it true oh uh, story no I don't I oh don't. okay I mean I saw him play a concert oh but um, with my when my group uh, was playing a festival uh -huh. so but that's about it oh okay was and this a long time ago yeah it was um, 2000 and it must have been 2007 uh-huh. 2006. Okay. Yeah, so it was in Norway. Oh, oh okay, so already, yeah. already... You were doing uh, a lot of Sex Pistols, Sex Pistols covers. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. Pretty radical. <laughs> cool. That's awesome. I mean, not me. The yeah. Velvet Revolver. No, his still, group. Still, still, still his group. pretty, pretty, yeah. pretty sounds, sounds fun, at least. You know, you can... I didn't think it was, a, you know, that fun for me personally, but it was okay. Of course, I'm not too big on the Sex Pistols either, so whatever. Not a big fan, not a big fan of people covering the Sex Pistols. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And, uh... Which other, though? Which other people have covered Sex Pistols? I don't is, think anybody. Anybody. Has anybody ever covered... I, maybe it's a good idea. I, maybe it is. The, uh, the Bad Brains, they have a cover. Oh, okay. Of the Sex Pistols. Okay, yeah. okay. It's but there, but there, it has different lyrics. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh, it's it's funny to me that you've just mentioned Bad Brains because I have a friend. I don't know if you're aware of the uh, uh, formerly Mike Hirsch bands, but Sarah Hirsch who passed away not a few years ago, not long, not too long ago. This is a very but morbid interview. This is a very morbid interview. I actually, we, we're speaking about this a lot, but we'll 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 we'll, we'll skip that in, in a bit. But. Uh, um, Who's Sarah Hirsch? Sarah Hirsch. Um, Mike went underwent some 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 surgery to 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 then became Sarah Hirsch, and he was leader of a lot of uh, really cool Washington uh, Washington uh, San Francisco bands. I'm sorry. Oh yeah, yeah, oh, I, the, uh, yeah, of course. Uh, yeah. And uh, he did he did um, he was the the head of uh, Bother Brains. Yeah, Could you mentioned Bother Brains. I know. Yeah. And uh, and so it's funny because I know that. Yes, I know that person. And I, yes. And I didn't know. No, they're they're very. <laughs> Very cool person, and I, I'm sorry, I just got. No, sometimes, sometimes uh, you know, I don't remember everything all the time either. So a lot of names. Of course, of course. Yeah. And a lot of people. But that and is very, very cool person. And and uh, it's a shame that uh, he he just you know he passed away like two years ago or something, and uh, and uh, it's it's I'm sorry to be breaking you know any sort of news. If no, I knew I knew about that. But, but uh, he's uh, he's uh, he's um, uh, one of his biggest friends uh, was stayed at my place a few years ago and uh, tipped me uh, you know that uh, I. Wasn't um, I wasn't aware that you had written any books, uh, and he was at my place and said, "Have you have you read the Ian Svanonius, uh, uh Psychic Soviet book?" And I was, "What? Ian Svanonius has books?" And he was just reading me passages at the beach, like staying at my place and my sister's. Oh, nice. And uh, and uh, he's a friend of mine, so we. It's said, waterproof. The book is waterproof. You can take it <laughs> to the beach. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. That cover, that, that the, the leather. Is it leather? Oh, it's plastic. It's I think, plastic. Yeah. Okay, okay. It's so, so more durable, even. Which, yeah, it's more durable, but less. Was that was that know, mm. less eco-friendly? Well, sure, yeah. sure, sure, sure. But you know, trying to it doesn't degrade. It might it might degrade after ten thousand years. Sure, it's a good investment uh -huh. for sure. Uh -huh. Yeah. So, you know, hopefully someone in, in the distant future will just dig up a copy. Yeah. Well. But unless it's you know, ten thousand years, I don't know. What, what, yeah, what's the what's the half life of a plastic book cover? Mm, I have no we don't know. We no don't, one knows. No one knows. Yeah, we're still and no one's gonna scientists, find. No one's gonna find out either. Have, <laughs> scientists have conjectured, but yeah. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Okay, cool. <laughs> okay, cool. Oh, baby, the 
sister. Come on! You step one, you're gonna think it's fun. Well, step two, you're gonna say boo hoo. Well, step three, huh? You're gonna scream, huh? What the hell is happening to me? I said, uh, four step. You're gonna feel scared, you'll say What the hell am I doing up here? I said Step six Gonna feel sick You're gonna say Oh, get me out of here quick Well Step eight It's already too late That's right You're at the devil's gate I said uh, Step nine You run out of time You run out of yeah. What is this escapism? Just uh, uh, you know uh, that escapism. you're bringing. Well, it's a rock and roll act. Mm -hmm. One person, mm -hmm. me, uh -huh. and um, it's kind of uh, based on you know collage, AM radio. It's a. Uh, I was frustrated seeing a lot of rock and roll shows because they didn't include you know like sports reports, weather, uh, traffic. Things like that. Uh -huh. So I, I, I thought this is this is my responsibility. Uh huh. Uh -huh. And so the this. purpose is it to reflect the uh, whatever's going on and and just your yeah, everyday exactly. life. Like groups are supposed to be a reflection of their time. Well, this group really is a reflection of its afternoon. Mm hmm. Yeah. Okay. So uh, so is it including reality TV, for instance? No, just you know, or whatever stimuli. Uh huh. Okay. It might. Yeah. Okay, so just so, okay, so no, no it's bullshit. Very, really. It's easy to yeah. It's it's constantly changing. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh -huh. It's uh. But still, 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 with some criteria, like still to be something you enjoy, not you know, because there's you know a lot of uh, if you're going to include radio, there's a lot of annoying DJs, for instance. <laughs> <laughs> I guess. Yeah, radio. Yeah. Well, maybe it's a it's a delightful alternative to oh. actual radio. Mm, mm, okay. You know. Okay. Okay. That's that's. Which brings us to my book, which I'm promoting. Mm -hmm. It's called Censorship Now. Uh -huh. It's about a people censorship, mm -hmm. and it's really you know inspired by you know radio, like the state of radio, which you are you are bemoaning, and uh, mm -hmm. yeah, and just the state of you know culture, sports, movies, television, newspaper, the p politics, the internet, mm -hmm. things like that. All the things that I'm against. Uh huh. Where has it felt the worst, though? You when, th it was when, the censorship. Where is it? Where is it felt the worst to you? No, I'm saying we've got a censorship now. Censorship now. Yeah, yeah. But let's censor it. Oh, let's censor censorship. Yeah, let's censor it. No, let's censor these forums: newspaper, internet, radio. Oh, I get it. Television, okay. rock and roll music. Uh -huh, uh -huh. The, the politicians censor the politicians uh -huh. right now. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So, you, you, so you're saying I just should just throw like these this recorder and this camera like out the window or something? No, I'm there's no window. We need some standards. <laughs> okay, we cool. need some standards. Okay. We need some standards. We need to like uh, institute new policies, and we can't rely on government or church, obviously, mm -hmm. because they have different ideas of mm -hmm. what should be censored. Mm -hmm. We can't rely on industry to censor. The industry is a, you know, a satanic laissez-faire. Mm -hmm. uh, so we've got to rely on ourselves to censor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Censorship now. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. But not based on some, you know, I don't know, well, yeah, it's you know we'll, we'll we can discuss it later. Okay. But that's the idea of the book, or the first essay in the book. Uh -huh. The book is 16 essays. It's a little like the Psychic Soviet. Mm -hmm. It's a very you know it's a lot of complaints, mm -hmm. a lot of complaining. And uh, does this uh, does this book, in case people don't know how to read, and uh, in case people have someone read it to them, inspired by well, some other promo I saw? If uh, you don't know how to read, you can just feel it. Mm -hmm. You smell it. Sure. 
you could taste it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But based on your suggestions, what, how does it taste like, though? So is there, can you, could you give us an audio preview of well, how it tastes? I, I, I read a little bit, so <laughs> I, haven't had to, I haven't had to do that. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> so exactly. It's a question of options. Sure. Yeah, exactly. Sure. Of course. Okay, of course. But in case, like, because um, on uh, Supernatural natural Strategies, you, um, you were suggesting that, okay, if you guys could, can't read, then have someone else read. For you, yeah, yeah. but what if well, that, the uh, that book was for rock and rollers? Uh huh. Okay, sure. And rock and rollers like to pretend that they're yeah, sort of, you know, you know, authentic, devolved, mm -hmm. primitive, uh -huh. sort of, you know, they're uh, what is it? You know, yeah, they're just action figures. Fi yeah, action figures. Yes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I think you know when I first started writing, I was like, yeah, oh, this might not wash with the uh, with my milieu. Uh -huh. You know, the people that I associate with might not want to be identified as readers. Hmm. So I was just allaying their fears, saying, hey, you don't even have to read. You can still get the book. The book can still be relevant for you. I'm just trying to be useful. I'm trying to give people sure. knowledge, but you know. So, so, so is it frowned upon in the community to be hanging out with a book or a few? Well, I don't know. I mean, I don't know. I mean, you know, you know, like this. Like no rock and roll for you, nerd. The Ramones. You know, do you see the Ramones reading Dostoevsky on the bus? Be, no, 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 you're not. Going no. To. But you will sell them. You will see them selling cookies. Beyond, you know, to, not beyond, but like 25 years after they've. I've seen this. This is true. Oh, really? Yeah, Marky Ramon has a couple of cookies, like Oreo sized cookies. It's, this is true. I'm not, oh. I'm not bullshitting you. Wow. <laughs> Marky Ramon, Ramon. Yeah, yeah, I know. So, um, Marky Ramon, I'm sorry. Uh, someone, some Ramon. You mean Ramoni uh, Ramon, I said. What's up? Uh, Tommy. I mean, sorry, not Tommy. Uh, yeah. I don't Tom. remember. I think it's, I actually think it's Marky Ramon. Actually, I know, it's Marky. It's Marky, Marky. Right? The yeah. Mark Bell of, course, of the of Voidoids. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah, oh, okay, okay. And then in the Ramones. Yes, yes, yes. I actually Tom see. Tommy's the original Ramon. Exactly. The producer. Exactly. He wouldn't do the cookies. The, 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 the cookies? He Actually, was the, I, he was a conceptual. Hmm. He was a conceptual Ramon, mm -hmm. I think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The I will. I would. Uh, Mark. Marky's not the conceptual Ramon. Let's face yeah, it. He's just <laughs> raw power. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's not hanging out with books. You're right. You're right. I'm. It was pretty safe well, to he assume. He might be, but that's not part of his public persona. I mean, he might be like reading. You know. You know. It's true. It's true. Uh, you know, real key in his, but but yeah, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> okay. But you know, but when he's you know, when, when he's at the comic book convention, yeah. he's not. You know, comics are different because there's pictures. Uh, so do, do, uh, there's probably a higher probability of or a higher chance that he's depicted in the comic books at the comic book fair, or uh, than uh, than actually reading them, I guess. Oh, I, I don't know. You know, honestly, I don't know the guy. This, this is a long shot. Yeah. <laughs> sure. <laughs> sure I'm, I'm just kidding. I actually seen him live. I actually was interviewing Andrew, w, Andrew WK like two years ago. And he was had, uh, um, he sometimes sings with uh, Marky Ramon's Blitzkrieg. And actually does a pretty good job at singing Ramon songs. It was pretty good, actually. Yeah. It was props to Andrew WK. Yeah, I'm sure. Well, but, Andrew, Andrew WK was singing for? Uh, singing the Ramon songs. It was headlining, it was, it was heading the band, uh, front, fronting the band, I guess. Not heading. Lining the band, uh, bad English there, uh, but uh, fronting the band, yeah, yeah. But uh, um, I like your shirt. I like that. Pattern. Thank, thank you. So, thank you so much. Yeah. I I I purposely purposefully wore it because I thought it would go along with you. Well, so thanks. You so I appreciate put it. some thought into it. <laughs> As you should. I'm a pro, dude. <laughs> yeah. There you go. I try to be, I, uh, or not. going to ask you, uh, what happens when the narrator does not know ed the words that he's reading? Like, is it okay, um, you know, uh, on the books? Because, you know, 
rock and roll guys will maybe not understand the words, and maybe what if the narrator doesn't either? You know, that's my question. I guess it's a weird question. Oh, the person who's reading to yes. the rock and roller. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. I mean, what if neither of them know what it, what some stuff means? Well, you know, that's fine. Oh, okay. You can figure it out uh-uh. in the context. Okay, sure. Usually. Mm-hmm. Okay. Sure. Is, and is music better when it's wordy? Because because I kind of. I kind of find that myself. Like, uh, I've always been into like pavement and stuff like that. Like, wordy music. Like, yeah, wordy I mean, music. It depends, I guess. I like Bob Dylan. Oh, for he uses a lot of words, but he's very, you know, it's very rhythmic and it's not, it's not like, I don't know, I don't know. Hmm. It's all about the sounds of the words and the way they fit together. It's not about how many there are. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it can work either way. Lots of words, few words. Either one can be bad or good. Uh huh. I was actually more hinting into to deeper word or like less common words with more specific meaning instead of the quantity necessarily of them. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So wordier in oh, that yeah. sense. I guess there's a proper adjective. You know, not yeah. this one. Yeah. I mean, for me, I think that for me, lyrics work best if they're not written. Meaning, if you can be extemporaneous, mm. you can ad lib. I think those are the best because they sit in the music th- the best. So, is that how you go about, you know, writing stuff? I mean, depends. Mm-hmm. But I usually think that's the best results. Mm-hmm. So, it's just like getting in the groove and then whatever comes to mind. Yeah, but and then you can, you know, work with that. Mm-hmm. Maybe, you know. Mm-hmm. Well, you know you're, you're not going to improv forever, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Otherwise, music was not possibly not going to work. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. uh, it's in terms of words, at least, because people, you know, people do. But in terms of words, I'm not sure if anyone does that. Like, I'd live, so I'm I'd sure. Live, yeah, I'm sure they do. I mean, doesn't? I mean, always. Dave yeah. Suzuki. Okay. Oh, really? I mean, I I don't know. Uh huh. But I think maybe. Uh huh. Uh huh. You know, he's like a he's like a improv singer. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. The guy, Re- Leon Thomas, the jazz singer. Okay, really? Okay. I mean, I don't know. Uh-huh. I'm just guessing. Uh-huh. I'm throwing out guesses. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Does, does uh, Demo Suzuki ever uh, ever do English at all? Because I, I, I have never seen him do English, I think. I think so. Uh, he, he does? I don't know. I haven't seen his, like... I haven't seen his ad-lib uh-huh. performance. Sure, okay. I've just heard about it. Okay, okay. And overturn all conventions Contrary to popular belief, uh-huh Yeah, 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 well Contrary to popular belief, uh-huh North is south, baby, and west is east I said, contrary to popular belief Do you think that there is a new adaptation of the nuclear family? Because I've seen you talk about that, the nuclear family in rock and roll music. Do you think that it's the one or two person live show? Like it's that it's been reduced? The rock and roll bands used to be like four people and now yeah, yeah, yeah. the technology I mean, like people are like yeah, one or two. I mean, we've definitely seen that, that trend. Mm-hmm. But now, I don't know, now there's this kind of, you know, now there's all these more tr- traditional rock and roll groups emerging. Mm-hmm. Again? So yeah. it's coming back like, full, not full I circle. Yeah, but I, I, I don't know, though. But it's that's, par- it's like it's the paradigm shift, right? In the meantime, at least, it seems to have happened. I mean, it definitely, it happens occasionally, you know, where there's this, you know, and it does, I'm sure that it, I'm sure that it mirrors some kind of, I can, you know, like maybe if you look at the Dow Jones mm-hmm. or the, you know, the housing index, uh-huh. or one of these, you know, uh-huh. the stock market, you know, you could see the shifting fortune, or the, you know, there's probably some analogous thing mm-hmm. that we could look at. Uh-huh. I don't know. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I don't know. Because I, I was like, because uh, you seem to think about this a lot, and uh, about these issues, and how yeah, rock and roll... Is in rock and roll, in rock, yeah. In rock and roll, right. Just the issues of rock and roll, like why is it, what, 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 what is its use? Uh-huh. What is it used for? What's it actually... You know, what is it? Why does it exist? Why is it replaced so much other art? 
And why is it like it is? Why, why, why is it still, why does it maintain its fascination for people? Mm -hmm. Because it's, <coughs> it's going strong. Mm -hmm. And every couple of years they're like, oh, it's over. Like when, when, I've at, always heard that. when house music came in, it was like, oh, rock and roll, it's over. It's not democratic, it's, it's over. But rock and roll is, you know, it reemerges. Uh -huh. And it's and it's really always around, isn't it? Like, because commercial logic will or ha came up when, like, late seventies, maybe. It actually, always existed, kind of. Wait, what do you uh, mean? Commercial, commercial logic in terms of the artistic production of uh, music, of popular music. I mean, when rock and roll came about, because they there were there were hit factories and stuff like that. But there seemed to be a time it was it was kind of like. More free, at least mainstream wise. So it's well, kind of this is you know the thing mm. about rock and roll mm. music. Mm -hmm. It's interesting. Mm. Where does it begin? I mean, that's actually in censorship now. My new book. Mm -hmm. We talk a lot about the beginnings of rock and roll, uh -huh. and and um, you know, and I think I mean to me when it began, uh -huh. it was actually very like it was a really vulgar commercial form, you know, and there was no. There was very, no pretense. It was like comic books, or it was just fun. It was like people looked at it like it was it was garbage. It was like a, it was like smut or like bu bubble gum or mm -hmm. like, you know. I mean, there's a reason people, you know, called it bubble gum music. Mm -hmm. or it was just disposable garbage. Mm -hmm. And then simultaneously, there was this movement, you know, folk music. And folk music was supposed to be pure and had good intentions uh -huh. and was very much concerned with, you know, the use of music and its history and its traditions and blah, blah. And it was very much tied into political movements mm -hmm. in the 50s and the 60s. Mm -hmm. And then when, you know, at a certain point, the two kind of musics merged because rock and roll was irresistible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And folk music was not irresistible. <laughs> sure, it's kind of it, actually very resistible. <laughs> yeah, so that so the two things merged, and the values became intermeshed. Uh -huh. So they became very paradoxical. There's a real dual dualistic nature in rock and roll, and a lot of it's because of that. Uh -huh. But also, you have to look at what's the beginning of rock and roll. Where did the rock and roll come from? The garbage rock and roll, and really, like, it's really an appropriation of gospel music, you know, mm -hmm. which is holy, sacred music that's about a community. So that's another paradox, because it was this kind of, you know, teeny bopper version of this very, you know, sacred music, uh -huh. which had a very particular use for a very particular community. Mm -hmm. So... So rock and roll is full of all of these contradictions, and that's why we love it, uh -huh. because it's got the folk thing infused in it with this kind of concerns about like more you know, ethics and morals and politics and its use politically and where it comes from and mm -hmm. you know the whole ideas that we all run around with about selling out like oh are you is the band selling out or are they being true? I think those things really come from these. You know the gospel and the folk uh -huh. things Does that, that, still that exist? inform you know rock and roll. No, is I mean like selling out is this still a thing. Like, do people call it? You well, know? no, but I think it seems that, to that not ha happen anymore. I guess right. No, nobody cares about that. You're right anymore. Right. They don't seem to care. But still, there's some kind of latent idea uh -huh. in rock and roll that's informed by those concerns. Mm -hmm. You know. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like what feels authentic to people. What is you know, right mm -hmm. for a group. Mm -hmm. Like, think of groups. I don't know. Name any group sure. from nowadays. Sure, sure. Uh, I don't know. Um, Who was the last group you saw? Actually, that's a clever question. Uh, last group I saw was, let's go with Titus Andronicus. D Titus Andronicus. Mm -hmm. I'm sure there's some discussion. Well, you know, maybe there's some discussion about, like, well, is the new record true to the Titus Andronicus thing? Or, you know, these kind of concerns. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I mean, people didn't think about that, I don't think, with in the earliest 
rock and roll, you know, early rock and roll doo wop. Those things were just, they were like very much tied to pleasure, novelty, mm-hmm. fun, and mischief. Uh huh. Uh huh. They were like Mad Magazine. It was almost like satirical, very close to being pornography. Uh huh. Uh huh. I had a bunch of Mad magazines when I was when I was yeah. little. Uh, actually, uh, just small. I, I just uh, to mean to 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 let you know that I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, but um, do you think that a lot of it is of rock and roll is the projection of charm? Like it's it's the projection of charm, charm, whatever it is you're doing. Like yeah, but you could say that about you know, photo music or something. Sure. Although I mean, obviously that's more about talent or something. So well, I guess it's a, lot of, I guess, it's a lot to do with performance as well. Yeah. I mean, I I think that like folk music for example, that's also about yeah. charm. I mean, I think any performance is people projecting, you know, trying to be incandescent. Uh-huh. Well, I mean, so I think that that's like a that's not particular to rock and roll. Okay. Okay. So then what yeah, so that's another thing is like, oh, well what is particular to rock? You know, that's so Yeah, so you're right. Those are the things that keep me up at night. <laughs> well, but they seem to be at least. It seem to be at least. And the nuclear family I just realized I know where it was from. Uh, the question was from uh, from your talk with Calvin Johnson on Soft Focus. Oh, the nuclear family. I mean, I think that rock and roll groups come from the gang. You know, I think that they're actually like a, a version of you know the gang, gang life, like on an organizational level, mm-hmm. the American gang. Uh huh. I don't know if you have the same kind of gang tradition in Portugal, but like somewhat. You know, in the in the American the Industrial Revolution, and there's all these gangs, and they all have names, and they have a look, and mm-hmm. so we that really have that over here. No? Yeah, that whole like thing, you know, the sharks and the jets, mm-hmm. that idea. Okay. The sharks and the jets. Uh, or so, those old gangs? I'm not. I don't know. Yeah. I'm not aware. Okay. So that tradition in America, you know, it's like I think the groups really come out of that because they all have the same kind of names. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. Do you mean those Irish groups and Italian groups of uh, foreigner, of uh, foreign, how do you say this, of uh, immigrant people? Thank yeah, you, thank black. you. A lot of them, uh-huh. you know, are black or Swedish even, you know, or whatever, you know, and they're called the, you know, the skulls or uh-huh. something. You know. But also a question of survival, and maybe this sits on something in the early rock and roll days as well. Maybe that sure. there was a spirit of survival well, I mean, or a need to survive. In a sense, if you think about cool, uh-huh. like what is cool? You know, the cool is something that comes, you know, it's tied in with, you know, jazz and <laughs> rock and roll and black. You know, it's a, like a black thing, you know, uh-huh. cool. And like, what, what is cool? It's like, in a way, it's a protest. It's a protest against work. It's a protest against, you know, fake emotional, you know, fake etiquette. Bullshit, uh-huh. you know, rules of comportment. Being cool is like a slowdown strike. It's almost like a labor strike. Uh-huh. You know, oh, wow. it's like a social protest. All, but Or that's so what it started so as. Mm-hmm. Now it's just, you know. Doesn't mean anything. Because <laughs> it's really some. T- most of the time, it's really perceived, or a lot, many, many times, or a lot, a lot, a lot of the time, it's perceived as some sort of detachment, really, which is kind of contrary to what you're saying. Well, no, I'm saying that's that is what I'm saying. Oh, detachment, okay. like I'm, you know, this kind of. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, it's, it's exactly passive right. aggressive. Okay. It's like passive aggressive, like sabotage mm-hmm. in the workplace. You uh-huh. don't quit your job. You just. Destroy the machinery. Uh-huh, uh-huh. You su- you subvert it exactly. Okay. They lost all their credibility, isn't that right? Yeah. They lost all their credibility, isn't that right? Yeah. They lost all their believability, yeah. And that's why when they tell you how things are gonna be, you say, man, not for me. You say, man, that law don't apply to me. You say, man, that 
that don't apply to me. You say, man, that don't apply to me. Next time they tell you, yeah. How do you shift from the need, shift away from the needs of like of of, of uh, financial management, for instance, in, in in your musical career? Like, how do you stay f uh, uh, free from that? I guess. Are you ever really free from that? that that's actually a trite oh, question. Okay. I, I'm not. I'm not going to ask that. You mean, do I care about? Money? Yes, kind of. Oh, yeah, <laughs> in, yeah. in, a, in a nutshell, kind of, oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah you know, you I mean. need to. Yeah, like, we all have to make Unfortunately, money. we kind of like, can't to like be, really go. To be, yeah. Thanks for putting putting my 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 two, thirty three uh, long yeah. word word long question into three words. No, of course. I mean, no. It's yeah. it's a legitimate question because you know I heard some star recently. You know, talking about how they don't do promotion on the internet and how they don't care, and you know that they're this cool being, you know, and it's which is it's good to not be overwhelmed by the demands or the mm -hmm. this kind of pressure, but you know, but it's also a luxury mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because if you're yeah if you're trying to do yeah you know what I mean. I mean, it's hard to have a job while you're uh -huh. doing a group. Uh -huh. sure. I mean, yeah, I, yeah, you can't expect anything from your group, uh -huh. basically, and you've got to at any level. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and you've got, and you know, <laughs> so you've got to figure out a way to make money. I, if you're gonna make some money off the group, I don't know. Uh -huh. I don't. I don't have any. Uh -huh. I don't have any profound uh, answer. I'm okay. sorry. No, it's fine. No, I don't know. It's, no, no need to apologize. I'm just asking because, for instance, uh, uh, we were talking about subverting the whole system and uh, and being while being a part of it. But um, but uh, you know. Yeah, but I was talking more about like youth and the kind of uh, general thing, not about like sure, of particular course, of groups. Course. But I just took it in the way that there's this very simple way. Uh, I mean, a simple idea that uh, um, one would be not to. I'm just going to do whatever and. Uh, even if it's not financially viable. And that's not v viable in itself, right? Yeah, yeah. Of course. Oh, you always have to consider some sort of production uh, you know, yeah. uh, involved in, in doing something. Or not. Or farming. And, but, you know, but then you have to take the, yeah, you have to, yeah. You have to live the, that life. You have to live that life. <laughs> you have to live that, that life. Yeah. I mean, yeah, definitely. If you want to be, you know, people, you know, there's a lot of resentment in rock and roll of the people who have a particular kind of success, mm -hmm. but then you have to look at what those people do uh -huh. to attain that success, uh -huh. and then you have to decide: are your are you willing to do those things? You know, mm -hmm. I mean, it's not all that, but that's part of it. Uh -huh. But that's there's definitely definitely luck involved as well, right? Like a time and a, a time and a place, and you know. And there's the magic thing you're talking about: charm. Mm -hmm. Some people have charisma. Mm -hmm. You know, and people want them to succeed. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of factors. Uh -huh. You don't. You don't. It's not just simple. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not just a you know a, an equation. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. But uh, it, it, it wouldn't be. Otherwise, you wouldn't have like three books about it. You know. Exactly. There you go. And and every book, any book and that accounting. you use uh -huh. about rock and roll is just, you know, just. Yeah, exactly. It leads to another one. <laughs> it leads to another book. So expect, it's expect a puzzle all. that can't be solved. Uh -huh. It hasn't been solved. Uh -huh. We're on our way. And and it shifts uh, every so years. Right? Exactly. Or always. Constantly. 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 It's constantly shifting. Constantly, constantly shifting. It's about revolution. It's called spectrosonic sound. One of your amazing bands is Nation of Ulysses. Was uh, Nation of Ulysses? Um, do you still find that uh, sort of energy in your more recent work? I mean, obviously, I don't. All, ah, you know. I, yeah, I mean, obviously, I don't perform that way. But mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of it with the energy that you get from music is it like the people you're playing with. Uh -huh. So it depends on, you know, but there's different, you know, there's obviously different ways of performing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. We mentioned soft focus earlier on. Uh, was there any, uh, w w was there any person you would say that really got what you were trying to do? Like, or all of them? Like, with, the, with soft focus? Like, oh. one that was particularly successful, you would say? 
to oh, you? Oh, gee, I thought, um, yeah, you know, I, I mean, I really liked talking to Mike Watt, actually. Uh-huh, uh-huh. He's just a great person to interview. Uh-huh. He's, that, that is very true. And Billy Childish, it was really fun. And, I mean, they were all good, uh-huh. honestly. Uh-huh. Ian McKay, uh-huh. he's a... He's, a great interview subject. Mm-hmm. I mean, all those. I mean, we lucked out that a lot of people who were, you know, they're they're pros. Uh-huh. Sure, 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 sure. But a lot of them don't really do that many interviews. For instance, that's true. Right. So, so it was really a really good chance to have longer cut interviews and going deeper and sometimes more sillier which I adore yeah. <laughs> uh, with certain subjects and certain people like it's always interesting uh, you know it's cool to have like a chilled Malkmus and you know and uh, and Calvin Johnson really going for it you know it's yeah uh, it's, re- it's really cool and Sonic Youth and stuff like that so, yeah yeah one and one and one is three you say contrary to goes on a podcast called Made of Things, and the um, what, what would you say were like the top three things that made you uh, do uh, dedicate yourself to art and music for, for the time being, for the, for your whole life, your whole career? Oh, um, art and music. Um. Like I, I need to do this forever. You know, so it's just something I need to do. What motivated that? Like, yeah. top three things because tops are fun. Really. You know, I, you know, honestly, my, you know, the community that I came out of. Uh-huh. But I, you know, it was never a decision that I made. I just did it. So uh, you know, it was just organically. We're just there. But I would say, I mean, if you were going to ask me what inspired me to do these things, it's I guess it would be like, you know, I don't know the, you know, the modernism. Uh huh. You know, meaning like art movements uh-huh, uh-huh. and, um, you know, and then, uh, you know, the Beatles uh-huh. and then, uh, and uh, I don't know, mm-hmm. you know, and then the community that I came out of probably, mm-hmm. which was very, you know, artistic. Uh-huh. I guess those are, I mean, those are, you know, those are three things. Mm-hmm. Uh, my, my first Beatles record when, was when I was I was given a vinyl when I was like six or five five years old actually yeah. this just relevant to the to the to the to the conversation but not necessarily like just uh, that that doesn't make me special I guess having no. a Beatles record <laughs> well no I mean that's the thing is you know you learn about them and they kind of point toward this idea this a very utopian idea of uh-huh. of the this family gang unit that represents this thing but it's mutable uh-huh. and it has a very like strong ideology but it isn't stated intellectually uh-huh. but it's you understand it uh-huh. so those things you know that's and it's surreal you know they're very surrealistic it's true so and they're funny very funny since the beginning but there's a kind of poignant you know they've got a poignant political side uh-huh. Uh-huh. You so did it all like in seven years. Yeah, I mean, it's crazy. I mean, but I mean, a lot of people don't like that, and they're over. You know, I understand people hate them because they're they're a saturation of the culture, etc. But for me, that was a formative a formative thing. So you're asking me, oh, what would inspire you to do rock and roll? Or you know, well, obviously the Beatles. Sure, sure. Yeah. People hate them because there's like just a handful of songs in the whole catalog that are really terrible. I guess. Yeah. Like Obla oh, Obla Da is just wretched. Yeah, yeah. I just. But you know they're. No. They were trying to do ska. Sure, sure. They were just, that's the, the theme of the record. They're just doing all the styles, uh-huh. and they did a ska. It's ska, it's bad, but, uh-huh. you know. Uh, of course. But then the whole it rest was, of the white okay album. song if it was, like, a minute and a half. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> it would be tolerable if it was just, like, a, like a thing, a little Yeah, like, because yeah. there's a lot of things yeah. on that record. Okay. You know? Okay. You sure, know? No, there are two. A lot of, uh, like, uh, uh, just blew away the concept of, uh, the, the the idea of a concept record, I guess. It was, I, I mean, it wasn't really a concept, just like a bag of a lot of songs, a lot of different yeah. songs, right? Yeah, what's their like four track record? <laughs> nice way to put it, man. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, hey, thanks for your time. It's been, it's been a pleasure. Oh, yeah. Gonna take you in. The light is real low. Huh? <laughs> oh, yeah. You don't know a small chance you'll be possessed, huh? Oh, yeah. Bitch, your head will turn around on your neck. Uh-huh. 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 Uh
Take you there, take you there. Come on, baby, the exorcist there. Come on.